Hey friends, and welcome to another episode of Honoring My Grandfather. Today we're going to look at a really interesting and maybe even intense verse, so if you're interested in that, stay tuned. If this is your first time here, I just want to personally welcome you to the Homegrown Ministries YouTube channel. I'm DJ, and on this channel I strive to provide you with biblical wisdom and encouragement to strengthen your walk of faith. I don't have a consistent schedule in regards to posting videos to YouTube, so if you enjoy today's content and you don't want to miss anything in the future, please make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, click on the bell icon, and then YouTube will let you know the next time I post a video, because I really don't know when that's going to be, and I have the organizational skills of a toddler, so sorry guys, I don't know. To my current subscribers, thank you so much for your support, I truly and genuinely appreciate you because every subscription on this channel gets the word of God out to more and more people. So again, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. So if you haven't seen the past episodes of this playlist, what I'm doing is I'm going through my grandfather's Bible and in it he has a bunch of sticky notes about specific verses. So I'm talking about those verses and kind of going more in depth about why he would have chosen that specific verse. So today's verse comes from Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 23 and here is his sticky note right here. So hopefully you can see that. Deuteronomy 29 verse 23. And this is his Bible. It is an NIV version. So I am going to read that to you now. And then we'll kind of explore it from there. So Deuteronomy 29 verse 23 says, The whole land will be a burning waste of salt and sulfur. Nothing planted, nothing sprouting, no vegetation growing on it. It will be like the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in fierce anger. Whew. DJ, didn't you say that your grandfather was a peaceful guy? Uh, yeah, I did. So then why in the world would he highlight this verse? Well, we're going to find out. So as always, context is key in all of these situations. So this verse that my grandfather highlighted is surrounded by a ton of other verses. Remember, there are no verses in the Bible. The Bible wasn't written with verses, the Bible was just written. And man put verses into it in order to make things easier to find. So context is always key when looking at any verse in the Bible. So before this verse comes about, before this chapter even comes about, before chapter 29, earlier in Deuteronomy, or even if you look at the book of Exodus, which parallels Deuteronomy and Numbers, all those kind of parallel each other, what you'll know is that God made a covenant with the Israelites on Mount Sinai. At this point in history, Israel has broken that covenant. They've worshipped other gods, they've fallen away, and God is renewing the covenant with them. So what happens oftentimes is people will pull out verses like this in the Old Testament and say, see, the God of the Old Testament is mean and unloving and he's vengeful and wrathful and, and full of fire and brimstone. But they're missing the bigger picture. The bigger picture here is we deserve nothing but God's justice. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. And in this passage, Israel has done wrong. God has every right to annihilate them, but he doesn't because he is merciful. He is renewing the covenant with them, but he's being like a parent. He's being stern and saying, hey, again, if you fall away from this covenant, if you back away like you've done previously, this is what's going to happen to you. See, God always speaks the truth, even when the truth is hard to hear. And that's what's so hard about Christianity, is that we have to proclaim the truth even when the world doesn't want to hear it. The truth exists regardless of whether or not people believe in it or not. And we are called to proclaim the truth. So God, in this passage, in this verse, he's just stating what is true. If the Israelites don't obey, they will experience devastation like what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. God is being very clear here. This passage goes on further to say this will be used still to point to the glory of God if they fall short because people will ask a question. And he provides that question and answer in Deuteronomy 29 verses 24 through 26. It says, All the nations will ask, Why has the Lord done this to this land? Why this fierce burning anger? And the answer will be, It is because this people abandoned the covenant of the Lord, the God of their ancestors, the covenant he made with them when he brought them out of Egypt. They went off and worshipped other gods and bowed down to them. Gods they did not know. Gods he had not given them. So again, God is speaking truly. He's saying this punishment will happen for a reason. If you don't obey, 
you are going to be punished. And that punishment's still going to point to my glory because when people see the desolation of this land, they're going to realize it's because we are not obeying. And guess what, guys? As children of God, it's happening to us today, too. People are looking at Christians and saying, why are you being punished? If God is all loving, if God is all true, why are bad things happening to the land? In America, especially, I can speak to that because I live here, the land itself, Christians, we've stopped being the salt of the earth. We've stopped preserving the morals of this nation. And now the nation itself is being punished. The land itself is crying out from the bloodshed of innocent lives that we are spilling. And it's crying out. And that is something that is caused by us. Whether it's through our actions against God or through our inaction, where we haven't stood up for what is right and said, hey, listen, that's not okay. God's not okay with that. We stopped doing that as Christians in this country. And now the country and the land itself is crying out. We need to step up here because this warning is applicable today. But wait, didn't you say God is rich in mercy? Where's the mercy here? Well, God is rich in mercy. And in all of chapter 30, God speaks to the blessings that will come to people who obey, to his children that obey him. But specifically, I want to point out verse 9 and 10. Verse 9 and 10 says, Then the Lord your God will make you most prosperous in all the work of your hand and in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock and the crops of your land. The Lord will again delight in you and make you prosperous, just as he delighted in your ancestors. If you obey the Lord your God and keep his commands and decrees that are written in the book of the law, and turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. See, there are two sides of this coin. There's the punishment that will happen if we do not obey, but then there's also the blessing that will happen if we do obey. Now, again, this can be applied to us. This verse is speaking specifically to the children of Israel. Don't take me out of context there. This is definitely specific to the children of Israel. But as Christians today, as children of God, we can still apply this to our lives. If we are not in obedience with God, we will not be blessed. But if we are in obedience to God, we will be blessed. Now, please, again, don't take me out of context. This doesn't mean that if you are a Christian, you are suffering with some illness or affliction, that God is directly punishing you for some issue. Look at John chapter 9 when people come to Jesus and say, Hey, who sinned, this man or his father, that he was born blind? And Jesus said, Neither. The man was born blind. He didn't have time to sin, right? What Jesus is getting at there is that sometimes things happen outside of our sin, right? Sometimes things happen just to produce his glory. He can use your illness for his glory. He can do that. So please, again, don't take me out of context and say, DJ said that because I am suffering from this affliction, God's punishing me. That's not true. It could be true, but that doesn't mean that that's the reason. I would, however, encourage you, if you feel like there is something going wrong in your life, to first examine yourself. If you've been praying out something and God isn't answering that prayer, examine yourself first and make sure that you are in align with his will. Make sure you are in obedience with him. And if there is some sin in your life, get rid of it. Because that could be something that's causing you to not hear from God. But again, don't take me out of context. You could be doing all those things. You'd be perfectly in line with God's will, and you could still be suffering from some affliction. That doesn't mean that God is punishing you, okay? The land itself is punished because Again, looking at America specifically, we as a country are not obeying God, so the land is tarnished. So things like cancers and sickness and disease are part of the land, part of the animals that we consume, part of the food that we consume. It's tarnished, it's fallen, because it is part of our sin. We do damage to ourselves. God's creation was perfect, and we've ruined it, and so we do suffer the consequences because of that. Maybe not our sin directly, but the sins of our forefathers are affecting the land itself, which is then in turn affecting us. So again, take these passages to heart. Understand that God is being truthful here, and he's saying, hey, if you obey me, you will be blessed. But if you disobey me, there will be a curse that follows. There will be bad things that happen. Sometimes it's direct punishment from God, sometimes it's because of your poor choices. When you make a bad decision, consequences occur, and that's also part of this, this passage. The land itself is being tarnished because of the consequences of the Israelites' action. So my grandfather loved the Lord with all of his heart, and he obeyed his commands. And I'll tell you what, that man's life was truly, truly blessed. Again, if you could have been there at his funeral, or if you were at his funeral, you would have seen how many people showed up that were impacted by this one man. This person who loved so many people, and he loved them all because he loved God first. And it just 
came out, it, it came out of his heart. It was easy to see that he was a man of God that loved people and his life was truly blessed. And every time he prayed over a meal, one of the things he thanked God for was all the blessings that he received in his life. And why he received those blessings was because he loved the Lord as God and he obeyed his commands. It's that simple, guys. You can have that joy too. You can have the joy that my grandfather had just by obeying the Lord and loving God with all of your heart. God will bless you. It's a promise. This, again, is a promise specific to Israel, but as children of God, God is saying the same thing to us. Obey his commands, love him with all your heart, and he will bless you. It's guaranteed. Now, that doesn't mean that you won't experience trials and tribulations. Don't get me wrong, because that will happen. This is not a prosperity gospel. God's not going to take every problem away from you once you become a Christian, but he will bless your life. He will. That's a promise. It's guaranteed. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you gained something from it, or if there's something that you think I missed, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And Christian friends, please continue to be the salt of the earth, be the light to the world, and go encourage somebody else today because the world desperately, desperately needs it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.